Oh, it goes up even <laughs> Control the place where the air boss comes every day and supervises all the operations on the flight deck, on the hangar deck, and for launches and landings in the catapult room, the catapult people, and the arresting gear people. They're all in his department. He has a 300 man department. He also is the supervisor of all those people. Some of you looked at those or laundry down there was colored shirts. Everybody on the flight deck had to wear a colored shirt. While I'm on that subject, those people had the most dangerous job I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a pilot and I used to, many times I'd land on the flight deck and the ship would be doing this and it'd be at night and there were these blue shirts out there carrying these chains and chocks on their shoulders to chalk us up and tie us down. They're crawling under the airplane with the props turning. They just had a really dangerous job. There's 35 knots of wind blowing over the flight deck. Uh, not much light at night and uh, it, 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 was, it was a tough, dangerous job and they had to be on their toes every minute. Uh, so the, you understand all that? Kind of a different I language, think. Isn't it? <laughs> think? I really eat all of this stuff. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Starting during World War II, as we took one island after another, we started locating a Loran stations. How many of you know what Loran is? It didn't work with it. Long range navigation. They even have it on sailboats now, don't they? Yeah. Uh, uh, what you had Loran C, this is the, the original bigger model. And uh, it, would, it was good for up to about 1,000 to 1,200 miles. So if you had two Loran stations, you could get one line of position from one, one line of position from the other, and plot that on your chart and you knew where you were. Barring those two things, he had the old celestial navigation system, he had a sextant, and he'd go out and take shots on the sun and the stars. And then he could plot. Basic old hand clock, and you have to wind it every seven days. Uh, seven days? Yeah. Really? No, they got batteries in clocks, haven't they? And they run for three years. That's yeah. Like yeah, you want to know something else? Did you ever see a telephone like this? Yeah. Lift it up, all the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't get it off of there, can you? Can you lift it straight up without taking the hook off? Lift it up like this? You know how heavy oh. it is. Pretty heavy, huh? Well, if you wanted to talk, you'd go like this. Whoops, this one doesn't work. There we go. That's not a lot of You should have been able to get this thing off. This one doesn't work. Oh, no wonder it's tied down. <laughs> you know, they were, there was this push on here that held it down, and then you have to kick that off to lift it, put your uh, Velcro, or not Velcro, the uh, ties on it. Nylon ties on the side. Okay, the Kathy, uh, when he was up here, uh, you would, how many of you know what captain's mast is? I do. Somebody does. Three days of bread and water. <laughs> <laughs> the captain has the power to administer disciplinary punishment to the offenders on the ship. And when the ship was underway, this is where he held 
his uh, investigation and doled out his decision. Uh, restricted liberty, loss of rate, uh, fine, and like this gentleman said, occasionally three days bread and water. Any of you been down to the brig? The brig is a very unsatisfactory place on a carrier. It's it's just dank, and, and if you've ever been to San Quentin, it's, San Quentin looks like heaven compared to the brig on the ship. <coughs> so. um, what is these? That's a That's bell for sounding an alarm. Mm -hmm. But they don't work anymore. They look pretty, but they don't work anymore. We have one man that comes aboard and he polishes all that brass work. Mm -hmm. That's why it looks so nice up here. Okay. Go in that door to the left and keep going down. Oh, well, look at this one. You can talk in that. Mm -hmm. you, you're too little, so you didn't get down to the engine room, huh? No, you just talking. How many have you oh. been down to the engine room? Okay. okay. Here's the other, the other end of the engine order telephone. This is the piece of machinery that sends the directions down to the engine room. I tell them to keep it on there. How much speed, how many turns to put on those screws to give the proper speed for say for flight operations. Okay? So the two helms will stand four hour watches. They usually trade off every 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And uh, one becomes a lead helmsman, the other becomes a helmsman. This is also where they keep the ship's log back when you see one of the quartermasters makes all the entries in the ship's log. Uh, I almost got by with telling one guy today this one was important to start an emergency break. But he didn't believe me. The ship's whistles and the ship's horn are up here, and they're again controlled by the helmsman here. Now, the captain's sleeping quarters are directly behind this gentleman, and uh, as you can see, they're pretty austere. By contrast, he has an import cabin down on the gallery deck, the O2 level. Again, the ladder right where you came aboard ship is a ladder that goes up. It's a captain's ladder, and it goes up to a very large, very nice set of quarters. Because the captain is the one charged for entertaining dignitaries when the ship goes into a port, a foreign port or some such thing, like the governor of Hong Kong might have come aboard. And We're supposed to go in there. Oh, really? Yeah. They're doing some work in there.